Now, one of China's largest real estate developers has been ordered to liquidate by a court in Hong Kong. Evergrande is the world's most indebted developer with more than 270 billion euros worth of liabilities. The order came after efforts to strike a deal with creditors failed, but the liquidation process could be complicated. Numerous authorities are involved and there are political considerations as well. Liquidation could have a major effect on China's economy and global markets. Massive, sprawling and unfinished. For years now, no work has been done on any of the sites where Chinese real estate giant Evergrande once planned to build homes for millions of wannabe homeowners. And likely no work will be done for a long time, as the property developer is being wound up in the most spectacular corporate downfall in China's history. It all started here in Shenzhen, a special economic zone where the Chinese Communist Party was experimenting with capitalism. Here, Evergrande was founded in 1996, at a time of China's great urbanization, when millions from all across the country flocked towards the cities. It led to a housing boom unlike any the world had ever seen. Evergrande was fast to build giant apartment projects, but not fast enough. To satisfy demand, the company accepted down payments for apartments it never built. Soon after that money was gone, much of it spent on more plots for future development, on banking fees in a desperate effort to raise more cash and on executive pay that turned Evergrande's founder Wee Kayan into one of the world's wealthiest people. In the midst of a liquidity crisis, Evergrande found itself unable to pay its bills to construction workers, painters and real estate agents. Soon, the company's debt snowballed into $140 billion. Further construction was halted and while the courts rule over Evergrande's future, giant developments sit unfinished. Insiders estimate they can hold up to 1.4 billion people. Well, let's go straight to Hong Kong and speak to DW's Phoebe Kong. Uh, Phoebe, what more can you tell us about this court ruling? Well, I'm standing outside the court, which uh, just ordered um, the Chinese uh, giant the developer Evergrande to liquidate this morning. Um, that uh, the judge said. Um, that um, the, over the past 18 months since the initial petitions uh, was filed by a Hong Kong-based uh, company, Topshine, and later joined by other offshore uh, creditors, um, that the whole um, petition hearings that has been postponed for seven times and now is finally happening because the, the court um, feel that it wasn't convinced by Evergrande that it has uh, like moved forward with a viable restructuring plan to restructure its over uh, $300 billion debt um, that it has, uh, it has accumulated over uh, the years. And that the court, um, like the judge said, uh, the judge said um, it will, uh, like later in the coming hours in the afternoon, that it will layer more details on the reasoning and also the arrangement of the uh, liquidation process where, where we expect that uh, it will appoint a liquidator to, uh, to officially kick off the uh, widening up uh, procedures. Well, as you say, Phoebe, uh, Evergrande has racked up hundreds of billions of dollars in debt. It, it's already defaulted on some of that debt. H how did it get itself into this mess? Well, uh, we have to uh, bear in mind that uh, Evergrande, uh, being one of the legendary Chinese uh, property giants, that uh, it heavily relied on the chain of debt to expand and uh, sustain its business in various sectors, not limited to um, uh, building businesses, but also uh, like all kinds of electric vehicles and all kinds of other industries that it has stepped in. And uh, we have also have to bear in mind that uh, in 2020, that Beijing authorities has uh, implemented uh, some restrictions on the borrowing policy on developers that um, directly prompted um, that uh, the Evan Grant as a uh, that, that uh, they couldn't borrow money that easily compared compare to previous period. So um, that was the beginning of the uh, so-called slow motion collapse of 
the property giants. And everyone now is facing a forthcoming uh, liquidation process that we're expecting that um, the liquidator would uh, like um, uh, identify and also to calculate all the assets, um, not only in Hong Kong, but also in mainland China. So uh, it would take years. And uh, it has a big question to whether this uh, order could um, could be applied in mainland China, um, like completely, and also how the creditors could access and claim uh, the access um, of Evergrande in mainland China. That that would be the coming up questions that um, that everyone will uh, closely watch about this. Phoebe, as you were talking to us just there, we were looking at some pictures of unfinished apartment buildings, uh, huge projects. Evergrande is responsible for building homes for millions of people in China. How much of a problem will this be for the Chinese government? Well, um, very importantly, um, the property sector has like, um, it accounts for 25% of China's GDP growth. So, so it is uh, like really the major engine of um, the economic growth of China. So, um, so it's not only an economic problem, and it's not only the problem of this um, uh, property empire, but also the government itself, because like it's now uh, has evolved into kind of like a confidence crisis. It's not only a debt crisis, but also a confidence crisis that uh, affects not only the market but also the general public that many ordinary uh, home buyers are affected because they couldn't get um, their property after paying the debt so um, it, the the impact and also uh, the effect is very uh, like uh, widespread and across China so um, it has to be uh, something that has to be dealt with um, by the Chinese authorities very delicately and we're expecting some more measures that the China government is trying to contain the damages brought by uh, Evergrande and also uh, other uh, companies that are facing that crisis. Phoebe, thank you very much. That was our correspondent Phoebe Kong in Hong Kong. Well, for more on this, we're joined here in the studio by Lars Halter from our business desk. Lars, tell us more about the implications of this liquidation order for Evergrande. Could it have effects on markets beyond China? Oh, it very well could, Terry, obviously, uh, because we have to just look at China's role in the world and how the economy there has been doing as of late. Um, obviously, China and the Chinese economy was still the engine of the world's economy for a couple of years. Now, we have seen very rapid growth here. You might remember for the last couple of years, we've really seen double-digit economic growth in China. And now that has pretty much fallen apart. Of course, much of it is also COVID-related still. Last year, we saw GDP growth of just uh, 5% or so. And in other countries, that would be massive. But for China and compared to their numbers, that is really weak. And we have to see how important the construction and the development sector is in that. That was massive. And now, obviously, this whole story is entirely weakening that sector even more. And a lot of the Western world is still dependent on China. I mean, we've seen, we're seeing this de-risking strategy where the West is trying to grow a little less dependent on China. But we still are at this point, whether it's for supplies, for some companies, for others, it's the market. Evergrande has billions of dollars in debt. Uh, it's already defaulted on part of that. The, the judge said there's no viable restructuring plan in mm -hmm. place. What about the creditors? Are, can they expect to get their money back? It's going to be tough for them. Uh, they might get some money back, uh, but uh, certainly not a lot. As you said, there's no liquidity. It's all basically in those ginormous buildings that we've seen everywhere. So there was a recent analysis by Deloitte, and they said that the return rate or the recovery rate, we should say, for creditors is probably 3.5%. But... Then we also saw some investigations into crimes and mismanagement, and they actually lowered that number closer to 3% even. So there is likely just not much money coming back to creditors at all. Now, Evergrande is responsible for building millions of homes in China. People are supposed to be living in those homes. Uh, how much of a problem is this for the Chinese government? Oh, there's definitely a massive problem. I mean, yeah, we've seen this urbanization over the last couple of years or decades, actually. And there are people who are desperately waiting uh, to move into these apartments with their family. The cities have been growing and conditions for many are terrible there. They've been waiting for these stories. Now, uh, we just got a statement here from Evergrande's vice president, Xiao En, and he says that they will ensure homes under construction are delivered 
delivered to buyers. But of course, we don't know what that is even worth. A lot of the buildings will get sold. Uh, who's buying them? How long is it even going to take at this point? No work has been done in many of these uh, developments for the last two years or so. Some are actually in the threat of being torn down because they were built without licenses. So it's really, I would say, impossible to say right now what is happening to how many of these buildings. Quite a mess. Lars Halter from my business desk. Thanks very much. Sure.